Hi and welcome to Words of Power, I'm Deidre Banks. I remember being saved at a young age, but I rededicated my life to Christ in high school. And I remember during that time just feeling the love of God just drawing me in and wanting to know more about this love that he had for me. Today I want to talk to you about John 3.16 and we're going to unpack this over a few days, but this is part one. And we're going to take a look today about the love of God. Father God, remove any hindrances from our heart, remove any blockages. Give us hearts of flesh instead of hearts of stone. Remove any hindrances, any blockages to our heart that are preventing us from receiving the love that you have for us. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and remove any deception that's coming against us right now. Anything that we believe that's a lie about you and your love, remove it from us and show us these areas because we want to love you deeper and more and we love you because you first loved us. So help us to receive your love on today because you love us more than we can ever imagine. You are a good God that while we were yet sinners, you died for us through your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So today we're going to talk about John 3.16. And this verse is quoted very much so, and many of you are familiar with it already. But we want to go deeper into the scripture. So I'm going to read this to you in two separate versions. And uh, we're going to focus in on these. And I've memorized a verse as well in the New King James Version. I'm a New King James Version girl typically. But I do go through other versions because it's good to see the comparisons. But I want to take you through that on today. So let's look at the English Standard Version and the NASB Version. Let's take a look. So John 3.16 in the English Standard Version says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever, mm, whoever, whoever, anyone, whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now let's take a look at the NASB version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone, all people, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So this salvation that Jesus Christ offers is for all of us. Anyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not reserved for any one specific group or person, but Christ died for all of us. So let's take a look at this word love and what exactly does that mean in the context of this scripture. It means to wish well to. Amen. I can imagine seeing a friend along the way and you're wishing them well and you're pleased to see them. You're grateful for them. You love them. This word love in John 3, 16 also means to take pleasure in, long for. God longs for us. And it means to have a preference for, to wish well to, as we talked about, and regard the welfare of. God was considering our welfare when he sent Jesus Christ to die upon the cross to fulfill this need. We needed a, a perfect sacrifice once and for all. And Jesus Christ was this perfect sacrifice who laid down his life. His life was not taken, but he gave up his life for all of us. Now, during the time that Jesus Christ was along the earth and even before that, the Jews believed that the love was just for them, that the love was for Israel. But this verse tells us in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world, and that's each and every person in the world, that he died, Jesus Christ died for all of us. Not just for one person, not just for the Jew, but also the Gentile, not just for the slave, but also the free, not just for the male, but also the female. He died for all of us to come together. Amen? All of us. So God is showing his amazing love for us and that he is charitable, he's loving, he's full of goodwill and he's using that goodwill to send his son to die upon the cross for sins that he hasn't committed, but yet still he will stand in the gap for us. No greater love hath any man than to lay down his life for a friend. Amen? While we were yet sinners, he died for us. We didn't deserve this love but God chose to give us this gift, this gift of grace, 
this gift of unmerited favor, this gift, this mercy gift. Amen. He was merciful and his mercies are new every morning. Amen. So when we look at this scripture and just this first part of it, we know that God loves all of us. He doesn't just love the black person or the white person or the Hispanic or the Asian person. He loves all of us. So if anyone tries to tell you that God only loves these kinds of people, but God doesn't love them. God only loves them, but he doesn't love them. So I can hate this group and not, you can't because the word is telling us that he died for all of us. Each and every one of us, God sent his son to die for. He loved us so much that he sent his son to die upon the cross. Father God, we thank you for your love on today. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for this gift that you have bestowed upon us that we can call on your name and be saved and that we enter in through Jesus Christ. He is the gate that we need to enter through. So Father God, help us on today to receive the love that you have for us because kindness leads us to repentance. And we ask you to forgive us, Father God, for not showing love to one another and for not receiving your love sometimes when we didn't think we were worthy of your love, but you've given us your love and you love us so much. We thank you, Lord, for this gift and we're honored to be a part of your kingdom as born again believers by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll continue to follow along as we unpack this scripture and see about the love of God, but also the gift and some other aspects of this scripture. Be blessed and thanks for joining in.